All right, everybody, this uh, lesson here, we are uh, looking at acceleration in more detail or, or more officially. Uh, briefly um, started getting you to talk about acceleration yesterday um, in the context of the um, assignment um, that looked kind of like that. I might still have it handy here. here. Right? Um, so that'll make more sense now for sure, and we'll tie back into it and uh, make conclusions. Okay, so if you need to press pause and go back and look at it again and so on, uh, by all means do that. That's the beauty of this uh, way of doing things, I guess. Um, so acceleration, um, and really we're looking at average acceleration, but people tend to just say acceleration because we're usually talking about uniform acceleration, in which case the acceleration is the same the whole time. So you don't have to say average, right? Because average is the same as the constant acceleration. Symbol for it is uh, an A with an arrow. Because it's a vector, there's a direction associated with it, <clears throat> and it is the rate of change of the velocity, okay? Which, if you think about it, means that it's a rate of change of a rate of change of the position with respect to time, right? So it's literally a rate of change of a rate of change, which is a little bit weird, right? But we intuitively, we have a good feeling for what, um, what acceleration is, um, but it is a rate of change of the delta d over delta t. The rate of change of the velocity is the rate of change of a rate of change. I feel like I'm saying that a lot. Um, so uh, remember any change in anything um, is always a final minus initial. So if we're talking about a rate of change of velocity, then it's pretty simple to say that uh, the change in velocity for sure is just final minus initial, which is going to give us an equation for this. It's just it's just the delta v over delta t, right? Um, units for this, you're going to have meters per second divided by seconds. And so that ends up being this. You know, meters per second divided by seconds becomes meters per second squared. It kind of, I feel like maybe it would be easier for people to understand if they just said meters per second per second. It's the number of meters per second, the amount by which, right, your speed changes per second. As a concept, that's very obvious. Um, but meters per second per second sounds a little odd. And so, We'll stick with meters per second squared. Mathematically, that's what it is, of course, right? Um, so, like I said, that's we're talking about constant acceleration, so we don't really say average all the time, and everybody's okay with that, okay? Um, the other thing we should point out is that if we're looking at the acceleration equation based on initial velocity or initial and final velocities, then you can just write it as v2 minus v1 over delta t. And it's not really a, an equation that's um, Worth memorizing in this context. Instead, base, you know, base it on the fact that you already know with any change in anything, right? Delta anything is always final minus initial. So if you've already committed that to memory, don't use up more memory space, right? Just use it. All right, so that's what acceleration is. Um, so if we're looking at uh, non uniform motion where we're increasing velocity, remember we've talked about um, this, you know, we used to call this uh, speeding up more and more. Uh, we used to call this, you know, uniform, uh, well, uniform acceleration, I guess. It's speeding up by the same amount over and over again. So that can now be called constant acceleration. This would be accelerating more and more. This one would be, like, accelerating less and less, right? So uh, constant acceleration, you know, your velocity is increasing by the same amount in every time interval. Um, so you have that same slope always. You can see along here, that same slope always, 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 always. Whereas in this case, you know, that slope uh, might be around here for the green line, right? The green line has about the same slope as the blue one. Um, but over here, you can tell it's the green line's more steep, right? Same thing for the red one. The red one might be the same slope around there. And then it gets less steep. So in that same time interval over, you can tell the red one did not go up as much as the blue one does, okay? So that should be pretty obvious, I hope. Um, and uh, so a VT graph for constant acceleration is going to have this same delta V over delta T all the time. So it's really that blue graph. And so we're just looking at that in more detail here. And so the delta V over delta T is pretty obvious. And that is, of course, the slope, right? So slope equals delta V over delta T, rise over run. And that's what we already know or just, just described acceleration as. So really what we're saying here is that slope on a VT graph gives you acceleration, right? So slope on a VT graph, uh, I'll just put it here, slope, oops, slope of VT graphs 
Oops, acceleration. Not sure why I started so far over. Right, slope of the graphs gives acceleration. And so it's, you know, you gotta keep track of these things, right? Remember, um, recall um, that slope of a dt graph gives velocity. If that's a vector, if that's a position time graph, then it gives velocity, they're both vectors, right? So this is, again, just going to um, require you to be careful uh, to recognize whether we're talking about a DT graph or a VT graph, because it, it matters a lot, right? Um, so working with this new equation, this is just, you know, you're given a three variable equation and you're just gonna work with it. So identifying the situation we're talking about, um, identifying what you have and what you're given and you're required and picking the equation, plugging it in and solving, right? So um, in that scenario, all right, here we go. Um, so for drawing a VT graph of this, this is gonna be really important. Okay, these are gonna be very, very useful um, soon. Okay, so very, very useful soon. And it just sort of adds right now a little bit of a pictorial understanding to help visualize things, uh, but it's gonna be even more useful than that soon. Um, the uniform velocity increases uh, from 10 up to 16. Now these VT graphs don't need to be drawn to scale. You just need to show like 10 up to 16, as long as the 16 is bigger than the 10 and the 10 is above zero, you know, it realistically, it makes, uh, it, it's not to scale, but it, it's relatively correct, you know? Um, so we have the 16 or 10 up to 16 uh, in two seconds. So sometime later, 2.0 seconds. So really what you can tell in this question, we're starting with a velocity of the 10. That's this right here. That's, you know, the V1. And then we're ending up with a velocity of the 16. And so, you know, two seconds later, we're at the 16. So that's that. That's your V2. Just color coding here to see. And then it happened in two seconds. And so everything's in the right spots and so on. And so really, our motion is just graphed, right? Like that. Okay, that's the VT graph for this question. Not really supposed to be any kind of difficult um, challenging thing at this point. It's just, just something that's going to be useful for us uh, coming up soon. Okay, so don't, uh, yeah, shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, so uh, in B, oh boy, it's messing with me here. All right, so in B, uh, we just want to determine the average acceleration. So at this point, you just think of it as a typical question where you're looking at what you're given and required and so on, and we're given a, a V1 equals and by the way, it's assumed uh, that, you know, forward is positive, you know, and, and so on. So there's, there's kind of directions here, right? So that's why I'm comfortable saying that that's a velocity and even though, oh, actually, sorry, this one does actually say forward. Sometimes it's neglected, okay? So this is perfect. Um, it, you know, it's, a lot of times it might not say that, in which case you're just assuming this, okay? Um, that they mean forward and positive and so on. Um, anyway, so 10 meters per second, V2 is the 16 meters per second, and the time interval that was given was the two seconds. Um, if it helps, you can go in and as you look at things here, say what they are as well, you know, just to really drive the ideas home here for what concepts we're working with, okay? So, Obviously here, I'm just still always following this grasp method. I focus more on the G, you know, um, but the required here um, is they're asking to determine the acceleration. And it is, of course, average acceleration as it always is. But basically, there you go. So that's technically the R of the grasp, method, the grasp method. Um, analyzing here what we have and what we can work with and so on. So this one, you know, really acceleration equals delta V over delta T, but in this case, more specifically, uh, V2 minus V1 over delta T. It's the equation we really need to work with. Um, or you could do this first. So I'm gonna put, or uh, delta V equals V2 minus V1 first. Okay, you can do that way where you calculate delta V first, then plug it into the regular delta V over delta T, either way is totally fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead with this. 
say acceleration equals v2 minus v1 divided by the time. So we get a 6 divided by 2.0. And there you go. There's your 3 meters per second squared. Okay, so therefore, the acceleration is 3 meters per second squared forward. Okay. Well, that's a nice basic starter question for us uh, for just calculating acceleration. All right. Um, and see how long it would take to increase its velocity by 25 meters per second if we still had um, that, that same acceleration. Uh, this one says it's three. Yeah, we have three. Good. I just was thinking it's a different number for some reason. Uh, so in this case, we're given uh, a delta V of 25 meters per second. Um, the increase is you know, understood in there for the positive. Um, so it's not necessary to show it, so I have it in a different color. I'm just trying to be very clear. Um, acceleration is 3.0 meters per second. And again, um, you know, this is implied that we're talking about forward still because it was before, and so it's positive still there as well, just to, again, try to be thorough. Um, and it's asking for how long, right? So how long would it take, you know, delta t equals question mark. could have been down there. This could have been delta v here if you wanted to really show um, you know, the idea of picking the information out of the question and then going ahead and jotting it down and using it and so on. So acceleration equals delta V over delta T. And we just plug numbers in, right? So in this case, we get to plug in the 3.0 and the 25. I'm skipping the positives because they're obvious. And we have that. So now we just have to solve, right, for delta T. Uh, back on the previous question, just briefly here, just I was talking about the grass method and I forgot to say the rest of it. So this was the analyze, and then this was the sort of the solve section where we're solving, right? It's just evaluate in this case, and then paraphrase at the end, right? So there's your all your steps, but I really only want to see given as a start. So frame the question that way where you have given, make it obvious that you're choosing an equation, plug numbers in, work it all out, everybody's happy, right? So in this case, we really are mathematically solving. We need to get delta t out of the bottom so that it ends up in the in the top. So we have an actual answer eventually of delta t equals rather than like delta t in the bottom, right? We don't want what one over delta t is equal to. We want delta t in the top. So multiplied delta t on both sides, giving us that. And then usually people find it easier to follow if I put an extra line in here of this. So now, of course, we're going to divide both sides by 3.0. Get rid of that multiply by 3.0, right? That's a multiplication in there. So we're dividing to get rid of it. And so we're going to do 25 divided by 3. Numbers don't always have to be nice. 8.3333333. So 8.3 repeated um, technically, but then really, it, should you leave it like that? Well, no, you shouldn't because we only had, you know, two significant digits time and so really to write that is is not great okay so I'd, I'd accept 8.3 or 8.33 or something like that but if it was asked for to the correct number of significant digits this is the correct and remember once in a while you're going to be asked that as sort of a separate part of the question and so that's what it should be um therefore blah 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 it would take 8.3 seconds for that change of velocity to occur All right, uh, we have a car accelerating for uh, at a rate of 2.5 squared for 1.7 seconds and up with a final velocity of 30 meters per second. And it's asking us to determine the change of velocity, determine the initial velocity, and then afterwards draw a graph. I wouldn't ask you necessarily to draw a graph right away in this one, um, because if you're to try to draw the graph first, um, you're kind of guessing as to what the initial velocity was, right? In this case, if you're um, ending up at 30, you know, a reasonable guess would be that it started at some lower number, but it was still in the positive direction, in which case you got your, you know, your V1, and it's increasing to 30 over 1.7 seconds. So that, you know, that's probably, that's probably what it is, right? But we'll be able to confirm that based on what we get, right? Um, so... 
our given information, we have an acceleration rate. Notice it's, you know, it's here it says it's a positive, and so it's implied that it's forward, and so on, right? That's what we're going to go with from now on. We won't have to worry too much about it. Um, it's happening for 1.7 seconds, and it ends up with a final velocity V2 of 30 meters per second. Again, the positive represents forward, and so on and so on. Right? It's pretty simple. Go about it that way. Um, and so the first thing it's asking for is what is delta V? So maybe we probably should have delta V in there. This, oh boy, there we go. Delta V equals question mark. That way when I'm saying, okay, let's analyze, obviously we have an equation to do with that that we can use directly. So acceleration equals delta V over delta T. So we have our, um, yeah, we have our acceleration of 2.5. We have our delta V that we're gonna figure out. We have our time of 1.7. And obviously here, we're just going to solve for delta V by multiplying both sides by 1.7. Okay. So delta V equals the 1.7 times 2.5 gives me 4.25. Right, so the change in velocity is 4.25, therefore for that, I suppose. After having done that, I'm, I'm going to shrink this down a little. Uh, I guess it's just enough. I'll just have to move this down a little bit for V here. Um, so initial velocity, well, in that case, you know, V1 equals question mark if you're looking at what you're given and so on. I'll do that too here. And obviously we knew uh, the original um, case was the final velocity was 30. Now I'm asking, um, and I have the delta V, sorry, that's what it is. I'm asking for the V1 being asked for, I should say. So if you're looking at this, you're saying, okay, I'm being asked for V1, I have V2, and I have delta V from part A, and so now I can go ahead and do this, right? So delta V equals V2 minus V1. So that leads us to delta V of 4.25. Uh, final velocity goes in as 30. Subtract an initial velocity, and we're going to figure out what we get as a value, right? And uh, it's the classic example of where you might have a little bit of a, you know, moment where you're thinking, okay, wait, if I subtract 30 from both sides, end up with a negative number, which, wait a minute, didn't we say it was likely to be in the positive direction? 4.25, take away the 30, just to make my brain not have to think too hard here. So that's the 25.75, so we end up with a negative 25.75. Remember, that equals the negative V1, right? So really, you just divide both sides by a negative, and you know, it's pretty acceptable just to say that. Um, and uh, so yeah, you're like, therefore, the initial velocity was 25.75, okay? So as a diagram, this would have been a little further up, but still, very that's totally acceptable, 25.75, okay? So if I went and did a, a VT graph specifically after this, I would you know, maybe use a ruler if you have time or whatever, but it does not have to be, please don't. I'm asking you, please don't measure and take time to make it you know, all perfect into scale and everything else, okay? This is just gonna be uh, 25.75, so V1, uh, 25, oh boy, it's a little better here. I'm gonna move my table. So 25.75, I can label that as V1, so basically V1 equals 25.75. Bring in there nicely like that, and, and then Final velocity v2 equals the 30, and um, it was everything else was already done, right? It was 1.7 seconds, so there's your 1.7 seconds, and we obviously started there, and end up here, and something I didn't mention yet, uh, that emphasize yet, but I should be all the time, is why is this a straight line? Because we're talking about uniform acceleration. Okay, 
So there you go. That's that one. Um, if you weren't asked for part A first, you could have just gone ahead um, and done, you know, acceleration equals V2 minus V1, like I did in the first question, right? So you would have been able to plug in the 2.5, the 30, the 1.7, and get this number directly. Right? But I kind of prefer getting delta V and then separately, but I showed it both ways, so. Go. All right, so the last bit here um, is we have this previous acceleration situation we've talked about and looked at where uh, something goes up and it has to come back down. And so here's a quick little video of that. Here's the part going up, it's coming back down, right? So easy peasy. The uh, questions to do with this aren't always as easy or as peasy. Um, so what does the DT and VT graph look like for this? Um, hopefully you had something like this from that, that sheet that I clicked on here by accident, okay? So you get um, hopefully the, the sequence of slopes here led to um, a straight line situation on your VT graph because that's what it was from. It was from this same kind of a graph. Okay, so we have a fast velocity upwards at the beginning of the video as you saw, right? So again, here, boom, fast velocity at the start, slowing down to stop, and then coming back down, right? And so that's what we're seeing in this, is fast velocity at the start, that's when I hit the spring, and then it slows down to a stop at the top, and then it speeds back up on the way back down. Okay, right? so that's, nothing's wrong with what I said there, I think that makes sense to say. Um, the trick question though, even though what I just said was correct, I think it leads people to an answer that's not correct, okay? Question is, uh, what is the acceleration of the cart at the top? Press pause, commit to an answer, write it down, whatever, right? So what is the acceleration while the cart's at the top? Or if someone's tossing a ball up and down, when you see it at the top, and it has a velocity of zero for that brief instant in time, what's its acceleration while it's up there stopped? Okay, commit to an answer, okay? Um, so the instant it has a velocity of zero, what's its acceleration? Okay. A really common answer is that it has zero acceleration. Super common. And it's because you're smart, observant people, and it just kind of seems to make sense. But if you think about it, um, if something has no acceleration, it would stay at that speed, right? And which would mean that the ball would be at the top of the travel or the car would be at the top of the travel. Um, so does the velocity stay zero? No, it ends up going back, you know, in the negative direction. Does the cart and the, or the a ball stay at the top? No, of course not, right? And so the the way this would look, you know, if I was tossing a ball up and down in the video here, it would be like the ball would just magically stay at the top. Or in this case, you know, I could hit it and like it just if the car stayed up there, that's that's zero acceleration at the top. Whereas it doesn't have zero acceleration at the top. That's why the velocity doesn't stay zero. That's why it comes back down. Okay. So it's, it, this is one of those, it takes a couple kicks at it to get your brain to, to stick in the brain. Um, you know, even though we talk about this and I show it very clearly, uh, you know, a couple days later I ask, you know, I toss a ball up and down and say, what's the acceleration at the top? A ton of people still answer zero. And then other people in the class go, wait, no, uh, it's, you know, and if you think about it more clearly. Okay. So the graphs uh, should look like this from that assignment from yes, the last lesson. So a bunch of dots for a bunch of slopes. And so what you get at the bottom here is we want to point out that A, this is at the top, right? That was, I think, obvious in the way the question was written, the way I gave it to you. Like, yeah, I said there's at the top, right? I modified it a bit from last time there. So um, the velocity, of course, is zero. But what's the acceleration at the top? It's a misleading question. The answer is actually that it has the same acceleration as it had the whole time, right? So this little acceleration, you know, has acceleration there, has, you know, it, Acceleration is that same slope the whole time. And this sometimes is an aha moment for people to be like, oh, okay, I get it now, right? Because you see that slope being the exact same the whole time. Just because you have a, a velocity of zero doesn't mean you have an acceleration of zero, right? Acceleration of zero would mean you stay at that same velocity and that's not what's happening. So again, uh, seeing is believing kind of a result here for us. The awesome equipment I have here at Rideau. Um, I will start this again here. Not going full screen. Hmm. What's going on there? Hmm. What to do? 
guess we'll just look at it tiny. Go out of this. I don't need the sound, so I'm going to get desperate here and try. Go into, is this the right one right now? Yeah. Um, went to Chrome instead. Whatever. It behaves normal. Can't do that for sound stuff, but at least here. There we go. All right, so restarting here, and you'll be able to see the graphs um, in real time, right? So here's the cart. It's going to go up the ramp. Okay, so boom, it has acceleration up the ramp. There's the up the ramp portion. Here's this initial uh, velocity up the ramp, decreasing, decreasing, decreasing to the point where it's not at the top yet. When I press play, it's going to keep going up a little bit. You can tell by that graph. So press play, goes up a little bit more, went to the stop went to the top, was stopped for a minute, brief instant in time, but it's still accelerating, and so it comes back down. Okay, so again, showing the, the slopes along here the same the whole time, plus this graph here, I'll skip ahead when I zoom out, zoom in on the thing here, um, you can actually see the acceleration value approximately negative one the whole time. It has a little jog there, but I just, I didn't bother redoing it to make it, you know, something happened, I might have bumped the ramp or something, um, but that's, you know, more or less around uh, one meter per second squared down the ramp the whole time, right? So the acceleration at the top, acceleration at the, at the start at the bottom, acceleration at the bottom at the end, acceleration anytime in between, you know, it's just the acceleration due to the angle of the ramp, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. And again, like, it has to be the, that acceleration while it's at the top. Otherwise, if I pressed play here, it wasn't that acceleration at the top. It would, one sec here, it would stay up there. Right, but it doesn't stay up there. It comes back down. So that hopefully makes sense. There's just an old version of the graph with a little more constant acceleration um, number the whole time. And the only other thing, thing I wanted to connect back to as well as part of this lesson is to remind you um, that any um, vector um, calculation subtraction in this case, because it's delta v, right, v two minus v one, could be done by scale diagrams or by math. And so this one here, we had a ball, had an initial velocity of 10 meters per second north, and then its velocity changes to 14 meters per second east in a certain amount of time. You can calculate delta V from either a scale diagram or from math, and then you could actually calculate the acceleration, right? The average acceleration, since we're talking about constant the whole time, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to show this one, uh, but this one's drawn to scale where you have the, the uh, scale I chose was one centimeter represents two, so there's the, the five representing ten, and there is the seven here, the seven representing fourteen, and then we go along the angle, right, I'm just putting them tail to tail and doing a vector subtraction, because v2 minus v1, and so on, so there's your initial, there's your final, there's your direction of your delta v vector, no different, right, we're just doing it for v's instead of for d's, so there's the answer there of like 8.5 or so, multiply that by 2, and you get 17. Okay, so that's the scale diagram that gives you delta V. And then the math just gives you delta V divided by delta T. And you get your, acceler you get your um, acceleration vector. Okay? Um, if you're looking at a math confirmation of this, it's pretty easy since it's like, all right angle stuff, so you don't even have to use um, components. Or they don't have components. Like one of them is literally just a y component, the other one is an x component. And so you can just go ahead and do the Pythagorean theorem. It gives you 17.2. Our estimate of 17, uh, pretty good, right? 17.2 in reality of what it really is. Uh, the angle, 54.4. I didn't measure it here, but if I did measure that angle, um, heck, why not? Here, just give me a moment. Oh, tracker. Protractor. And let's turn it around and we're looking for, um, we did, let's make sure I have what angle I measured here. It was this top corner one, right? So from basically like south, a certain number of degrees uh, east. So we're going to line this up, so we can measure that. I think I've got that pretty good. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, something, right? 56, 57, um, south 57 or so degrees east. And here we had the south 54. Like it's, you know, I just quickly, quickly, quickly did that. But yeah. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 
yeah, it's 55 or 54, like if you look at it carefully there. So as usual, uh, careful scale diagrams lead to pretty good approximations. Obviously, the best is the math answer. Um, but yeah, it's all good stuff. So this question is these ones here, the 6, 24, and 25, are very much like this kind of thing here, where you're doing VT graphs and just answering questions by doing the calculations. Um, and then this is a, a chance to do the uh, get the acceleration from scale diagrams. These scale diagrams have already been assigned. If you haven't done them yet, now is a good time to practice. Do those ones, because then you'll be able to get the acceleration numbers. Okay? So I have tried to approximate values, reasonable numbers, like if you're traveling 45 kilometers north and how long does it take you to move, change, like turn a corner, like 15 seconds, I don't know, it depends how big long the corner is, right? But the, the shorter the corner, you'll find the more acceleration there is, which is normal in life as well. Okay, so um, if that seems like a fairly reasonable number, airplanes travel big, wide turns, go even slower. So that, you know, maybe that's a, a time interval for that. Um, a hockey puck going off the boards, happens really fast, right? So, you know, decimal zero something seconds. Like those are fairly reasonable times. And so you should get you know, fairly reasonable numbers uh, for what the accelerations actually are. They might not be what you expect, particularly in this case, okay? But a hockey puck goes through a very large acceleration when it bounces, uh, deflects off of a, um, off the boards, okay? So that is it. As always, thanks for watching and until next time.